Welcome to Adapting Class. This is the second portion of the test taking strategy on enclosed review concept using prioritization I did two days ago. I don't want to mix any question on your prioritization. I want you to master these topics and prioritization techniques such that the enclosed become just uh, easy for you. So let's get to it. 20 questions again based on key facts, and we're going to analyze things you need to know for your prioritization so that when you see a question of prioritization, it's easy for you. So let's get to it. Before that, let's work on test taking strategy again. I talk about pathophysiology for the uh, during the first uh, lecture. Let me show you one more example about how you can use strategies using pathophysiology. So let's assume that 85 year old male uh, was admitted uh, with pneumonia. Eighty five year old admitted with pneumonia. Of which of the following should be reported to the PCP primary care provider or the provider taking care of the patient? Or which of these which of this should be a priority to be reported? And you have to focus on things that will care the patient, things that are very important, things that you see, then you say, no, this is not what I see in pneumonia. That's all. This is not what I see in pneumonia. So let me give it to you. I say, oh, okay, one, temperature is 101.5. Two, I tell you, patient has fatigue. Three, I can tell you he has chills. Four, I can tell you uh, cause um, crackles at long basis. I can say five, moderate secretion. Right? Or uh, sputum. I can tell you that it's sad. It's probably 92. Is seven is PaO2, probably like 80. And then I can put eight, I say, um, is BUN is 40. Which of these do you think is a priority? This is all prioritization is. You break down the question, pneumonia, that's what I'm asking you. Patient has pneumonia, what do you expect among this? Of course, it's a pneumonia. It's an infection. It should have a fever. Pneumonia, it makes you tired. You can do things like a flu. Fatigue is normal. You have pneumonia, you have infection, you have chills. Your lung is going to sound crackles and coarse, right? You're going to have some secretions. Your saturation is not going to be 100. And your PO2, this is normal. 80 to 100 is normal. So even this is normal. BUN of 40, yeah, it's not. The ratio of BUN creatinine is 20 to, uh, uh, 20 to 1. If you take it, uh, BUN creatinine ratio should be 20 to 1. Normal BUN is usually and 20 maximum to 20, right? And creatinine one. So that's why the ratio is 20 to one. If I have BUN, what, 40, I know that I'm dehydrated or I'm going to renal failure. Therefore, this patient, BUN has double. I expect the creatinine to be above 1.5 or two. That's how it's going to double. So what do you think? This is your problem. And this is what the whole test taking strategy. You look at it in prioritization. You look at it and said, I expect all this value. The only thing I don't is that. Don't worry about the fever. He has pneumonia. Don't worry about all the long sound. So this is what the whole thing I'm going to be doing all throughout these cases. You will be seeing me doing the same thing back and forth. It's no magic. Same thing. So 
one two seven are all normal. They I don't need to report this to the provider. The only thing I need to report is BRN of forty. Okay, so that's it, the beginning of it. Now let's get to it. Number twenty one. We already had uh, twenty cases. Seller dot apply. And this is caring for the following client. Which client situation need what? Immediate intervention. I need to do something right away. So I look at it, I divide it, and I said, this is not normal. This is not what I expect. Then I need to intervene. Client, client with INR of sex on comedy. If you're on comedy, I want your INR to be two to three. If you have prosthetic valve, 2.5 to 3.5. These are all concepts you have to know. Sex, you bleeding. Client with coronary disease on what? Metallogonovan. Heart disease, metallogonovan. And I said, why did you give me this? This work by doing vasoconstriction. It can increase your hypertension. It can worsen your coronary sym symptoms. Therefore, I should intervene. Client with what? Four contraction in 10 minutes on oxytocin. You have to know these numbers. Less than five, up to five contraction in 10 minutes is what is normal for oxytocin. It's contracting four. Don't worry about it. Client with serum, sodium of what? 132 and getting desmopressin. 132 is hyponatremia. Desmopressin is like ADH. I'm going to absorb more water and your put sodium will go down more. We'll go to like 125 and you cease. Therefore, if your sodium is 132, you should not give them desmopressin. You give them demicycline. So this, I need to intervene. Climb with the serum sodium of what? 131. I should not absorb any more water. Therefore, I should block ADH. Well, block ADH is demicycline. So this patient is doing the right thing. So who do you need to intervene? One, two, and four. Straightforward, breaking down the question using concept and the test taking strategy, guys. Select that or apply. And this is caring for the following client two hours after the indicated procedure. This one you have to know, you bring your concept down. This procedure position, I have a video, you can check position, procedure, you got to master it, right? Post liver biopsy, a biopsy, your liver, your heart rate is 85. This is normal, okay? Therefore, don't worry about it. Post kidney biopsy, your map of 65, this is normal, you know bleeding. Post thoracentesis laying on the affected side. This is your lung, too long. I puncture this lung, I draw some fluid. This lung is injured. I don't want you to lay on it. I want you to allow this lung to re-expand. Therefore, you should lay on the unaffected side. It's laying on the affected side as you intervene. Post lumbar puncture, okay? And laying supine. This is your back. I punch out that back. You need to put pressure in there. Therefore, if you lay supine, I'm good. Post cerebral angiogram and anxiety. Angiogram means it's the same thing as cardiac catheterization. I go here, I go to your brain and did whatever I want to do. All of a sudden, you're anxious. Anxiety in your test is never normal. It means respiratory distress. This guy is looking for oxygen. We need to intervene. Probably he's bleeding. Anxiety is a form of bleeding. It's going to shock and looking for oxygen. He's telling you I'm bleeding. So this patient is bleeding. Anxiety after angiogram. So three and five at one, did you see? Next question, same thing, SATA, eating the same information. And then is caring for the following client one hour after the indicated procedure. I just want you to master them. I keep on striking the same area so that you can like dig in, dig in, so that you can master it. 
which client if you watch this video but if you don't yet yeah, i don't know about that situation need immediate intervention post liver biopsy and place on the left side your liver is on your right side if i biopsy it i want you to put pressure on there don't lay on your left put pressure on the right and lay on the right therefore i have to see this patient post kidney biopsy and place on the right side for comfort. The kidney is on your back. If I biopsy the kidney, I want you to lay on your back to put pressure. You lay on your side, I need to see you. Post thoracentesis, the same thing we see. There's a reason why I'm doing it. I want you to master it. I care about your success. So I keep on digging, giving you the same concept. They keep on asking you in your test. They will confuse you. They will change the question. The same thing. They will give you the same thing multiple times. You think you get it wrong. No, I want you to train your brain to so that you can learn that. I give you the same thing. post thoracentesis. I just change one word. Lay on the unaffected side. Yes, this is the right thing. Lay on the unaffected side so that the affected side can uh, recover. Therefore, this patient, we don't need to intervene. The, these two we have to intervene. Post lumbar puncture and place on the fetal position. Like we saw the backside, I puncture your back. I want you to put pressure on the back, not the fetal position. I need to intervene. Post cardiac angiogram, I change the cerebral, I put cardiac and the affected leg lay flat. If I go through your groin, I want that leg to be flat at least four to six hours. So this is good. So who do you need to intervene? One, two, and four. Okay. Who do you see? Select or apply. Which client situation need intervention? And this is caring for the following client. Who need intervention? Divide it into two. I scan your bladder, I get 500 after I give you atropine for bradycardia. Atropine is anticholinergic. That's how you do B sharp. Find the situation, analyze it, and see if it's, you have to be sharp about it. Atropine is for bradycardia, it's anticholinergic. What does anticholinergic do? Renal retention. Urinal retention, 500. I expect that. Platelet of 75,000, I give you heparin for DVT. Heparin hates platelet. If you give me heparin, it's going to drop my platelet. Anything less than 150,000 is a problem. We need to see this face. Tremor, after I give you abudro for asthma exacerbation. Abudro is alpha, is a beta agonist. Okay? It's beta agonist. Therefore, Okay, if you give a beta agonist, it binds to beta and stimulate beta, and what beta do, it goes up. So when you are give you epinephrine, it's a form of agonist. Your heart rate is going to go up. The same thing, if I give you a burro, which is a beta agonist, you start having tremor, that's fine. You have palpitation, that's fine. Your heart rate goes up, that's fine. Muscle rigidity, bad weight. After I give you what? Fufenacin for agitation. This is a first generation antipsychotic. If I give you first generation antipsychotic and you have muscle rigidity, that's what we call what? NMS, neuroleptic malignant syndrome. This is a problem. Headache after metoclopramide for intractable nausea. Metrochlopramide is for nausea, it's antiemetic, but it's also what? It has some antipsychotic effect. It does the same thing on first generation. It can cause uh, extra pyramidal side effects. Those are the number one side effect. The other side effect of this is diarrhea. Headache is a common side effect of that. So don't worry about it. So two and four are your problem. Next question. And as is caring for the following client, which client need further intervention? Divide it. A mustapin. Drinking two to three liters of water a day. What is this? This is TCA. And I see two to three liters of water. Does the patient have constipation? No. A mustapin causes what? 
constipation because it's what? Anticholinergic. Therefore, if you're drinking two to three liters, liters of water a day to prevent constipation, I'm happy for you. Lithium and taking 2,000 milligram um, of sodium a day. This is a thinking question. The daily requirement of sodium is usually between 2,000 milligram to 2,300 milligram. This patient is doing what they need. If you're on so uh, lithium, you should not go too much half on your sodium or too low on your sodium. Make sure your sodium is normal as much as possible. It's taking daily requirement to maintain sodium. Therefore, this is normal. Loxapine, and I'm taking diphena hydramine. What is that? Yeah, loxapine is what? A first generation antipsychotic, right? And this is Benadryl, diphena hydramine. What is the one of the side effect of this? Extrapyramidal side effect. So we give them diphena hydramine to prevent extrapyramidal side effect. You're doing good. Test taking strategy. You got to pick number four. Carbamazepine, and I'm taking aspirin for headache. Think about it. Carbamazepine, one of the side effects is what? Thrombocytopenia. That means it drop your platelet. Aspirin will destroy your platelet for seven days. If you taking carbamazepine and you start taking aspirin, you're going to bleed. Bad. It's a bleeding problem. You should not do that. So that's the key for that question. Number 26. What do we have? Select or apply. And this is caring for five clients or what? Dejoxin. All of them on dejoxin. Which do you, who do you want to see? Or who intervention need immediate uh, management? I intentionally did it so that you can know some of the things you should worry about. One of the things about dejoxin is what? My key that I tell people all the time about the joxing is not to worry. Start from your head. You get neuro. Start from your eye. You have a high problem, high color change. Start from your mouth as you go down. Okay? GI symptoms is number one. Your heart is there. Cardiac. You have cardiac arrhythmia and your kidney is there. You have renal failure. It affects your kidney. Therefore, if 2.5 Creatinine, yeah, kidney is in trouble. We get the dejoxin toxicity. If you have nausea and vomiting for two days, that's your GI symptoms. I need to see you. Client with seven year old with epical pulse, no dysnomies, 70, 90, 70, and 60. If it's less than 90 for neonate, you hold it. Kid, uh, less than 70, hold it. Adult, less than 60, hold it. The guy is 71, don't worry about it. Client with serum sodium of a potassium of 4.5. Potassium, you want your potassium to be normal. You want your magnesium to be normal. You want your calcium to be normal in digoxin. This is normal, we good. Client taking local rise for monopausal symptoms. Local rise causes hypokalemia. I told you, potassium normal. This guy is causing hypokalemia. We have to see him. One, two, and five are your friends. Next question. Select or apply. And next is caring for the following client. Which client situation need immediate intervention? Divide into two. This I want to show you that there's some EKG changes that you have to know. We all know a few of them, but there's few of them. You added, you have to know in case they change it. Bumitimide. This is the loop diuretic. What does it cause? And you see a U wave on the EKG. Bumitimide causes hypokalemia. U wave is a sign of hypokalemia. They have EKG change. See them. Analopro is ACE inhibitor. It causes IK. Features of IK on EKG, peak T wave. You have to see this patient. Clotilidone, what is that? This is hydrochlorothiazide group. It causes hypokalemia. One of the hypokalemia uh, features is flattened and inverted T wave. We need to see this patient. 
Have you seen this medication before? Let me clean it and you see. Etacrinic acid is a loop diuretic. Etacrinic acid is a loop diuretic. It does the same thing as bumitimide or furosemide. And one of the features of hypokalemia is a prolonged heat. When you get into these stages, you're about to die. Spinolactone is a potassium sparing, increases your okay. K. One of the large stages of hyperkalemia, apart from peak T wave, then you have flattening, and you have a yeah, peak T wave. After that, you're going to have widening QRS complex, and therefore you go into arrhythmia. We got to see this patient. All of them need to be seen. They have a key uh, test taking strategy. If you take in a medication and you have EKG changes, it's no brainer. You have to pick that answer. Even if you don't know whether it's true or related. If I give you a medication and I tell you there's EKG changes, something is wrong. Pick that answer. It's a priority. There shouldn't be EK changes, EKG changes on your medication. To all of them. Normal 28. And this is caring for the following clients. Which client situation need immediate intervention? Divided. COPD, south of 89. They usually live 89 to 91 or 92%. This is fine. Ask my patient exacerbation and no reason. This is what we call silent chest. The patient is tired. It's about to die. See that patient. Cystic fibrosis. They have lung and pancreas problem. They have recurrent lung infection, and they are long, they will have prevalent thick secretion and 101.5. This is all coming from this. This is normal with cystic fibrosis. Forget about all these words. Prevalent thick secretion fever. Don't see this patient. Schizophrenia and auditory hallucination. Among all the hallucinations you should worry about is auditory, so that you can figure out what is the patient is planning to do, whether they're hearing voices to kill themselves or kill another patient. Any schizophrenic patient with auditory hallucinations, see them. The other hallucination, tactile, smell, vision, don't worry about it. Anorexic patient receiving full calorie requirement, day one during hyperalimentation. Hyperalimentation is basically we feeding them with TPN. Okay, when they need calorie, you should give them half of their total requirement in day one. This patient is getting full. It's going to go into refeeding syndrome. We need to see them. So two, four, five are your right answer. Number 29. Select that apply. Which client situation need immediate intervention? And this is caring for the following client. Divide it again. I want to see how much you know about your electrolyte. These questions spread throughout all the topics you need to know. Okay, SIDH, your sodium is low. Don't give them anything less than 0.9%. This is 0.9%. You should intervene. Isotonic dehydration, that means they lost 0.9%. So give them something that is the same as 0.9%. Lactate ringer is good, so don't worry about it. Sodium of 129. The sodium is hyponatremic, so you want to give them something greater than what? 0.9%, 0.9%. So 3% is what? Is good, so you're doing the right thing for them. Sodium of what? 155. Yeah, sodium is too high. You should give them something less than 0.9%. The patient is getting D5W. It's less than 0.9%. Therefore, this is going to dilute the fluid. And so that is good. SIDH, sodium is what? Hyponatremia, give them something greater than 0.9%. The patient is getting 0.9%. We should see that. So these are the two that you need to intervene. This is normal. If your sodium is low, we should give you hypotonic. If sodium is high, we give you hypotonic. This is hyponatremia. We should give them uh, greater than 0.9%. So one and five are your friend. This is concept you have to know.
Next question. Five clients present to the emergency room. Which client situation need immediate intervention? Select or not apply. You have abdominal pain, sausage shape mass. What do you think? Sausage shape mass. This is intersusception. Abdominal pain, olive shape mass. What do you think? This is pyloric stenosis. Abdominal pain, Murphy sign. This is cholecystitis. Abdominal pain, curling sign. This is related to pancreatitis or angiogram and they bleeding. This is periambulical ecchymosis. Abdominal pain, great tenor sign. This is also bleeding. So who do you want to see? Somebody is bleeding. Somebody is bleeding. This is cholecystitis. It's fine. Pyloric stenosis will take care of them. Sausage mass. This is ischemia. We have to see one, four, five. Hi, our friend. Next question. Divide into eight. Prioritization form. Five clients in the MESA unit. Which client situation need immediate intervention by the church nurse during routine care? The same thing I told you. We're going through everywhere to pick up stuff. Smallpox, and I mean negative pressure room. Smallpox is what? Airborne. Negative pressure room, good. Shegela is contact. The nurse wear sterile gloves and disposable gun. Disposable gun is fine. Sterile gloves is no. We should intervene. You should wear non-sterile gloves. Adenovirus is contact and droplet. So we have contact and droplet. Next way, surgical mask is for the droplet, gown and gloves for the contact. So we're doing the right thing. Mycoplasma meningitis is what? Droplet. Next way, gown and gloves. Client will be laughing at you. Why are you wearing this? You need to wear what? Just uh, um, surgical mask, unless you're touching my wound or anything like that, then you wear gown and gloves. So this one, we need to intervene. HIV, nurse wear gown, gloves, surgical mask. HIV is standard precaution. Patient will be looking at you like, I'm not infectious. Why are you wear gown? Why are you wearing gloves? Why are you wearing surgical mask? Standard precaution. Cutaneous diphtheria, that means there's a reason why there's a word cutaneous there. There's a pulmonary diphtheria. Cutaneous means skin. So it's contact. Next wear surgical mask. Why you wear surgical mask? You have to wear something to protect you. Contact. Okay. We got to see that. So two, four, five, six. This question highlights everything you need to know about uh, 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 precautions. And I, I try to I give you guys the key fact. I use this to illustrate. This is the way you answer uh, precaution questions. They like it. So infectious control, you should master this. Same thing, number two, like I told you, I try to give it to you as if you get it wrong, like your test, and then you go through it. Say, Why are they giving me the same question? No, testing you if you mastered it. Select or apply. Six clients on the search board, medical search board. Which client situation need immediate intervention by the charge in a general return care? TB, airborne. Client wear 95 in the private room. Private room is fine. Client does not need to wear anything in the room. So we need to intervene. Strep pneumonia, right? Droplet. Client wear surgical mask in the room. Client should not wear anything in the room. We need to intervene. Pertosis, droplet. Client in negative pressure room. We don't need negative pressure room for droplet. We got to intervene. MRC, contact. Next, employ single use equipment. Good. Scabies, contact. Next, ensure client door closed all the time. L look at it. You are in your room. You are in contact precaution. I'm walking outside. Would I get infection? No. And why do you have to close the door completely? In contact, the door may be closed. That's the right. It does not need to be closed all the time. So we got to intervene. Rubella, measles. Next wear surgical mask. You're going to get infected. This is what? Airborne. 
you need N95. The same thing, these two questions I've done, if you have problem with infectious control, look, listen to it multiple times and see the strategy in answering this question. If not, check my YouTube, more videos there to help you master that. 33, what do we have? Select and apply. Same thing, six patient, med cell unit, U situation, need intervention, divide into two, pericarditis, severe chest pain relieved by leaning forward. You ask yourself, what is pericarditis? You have a inflammation around the pericardium, you have friction rub, so what? You get chest pain and um, when you take inspiration, but when you lean forward, the pain goes away. This is normal. Large lobo pneumonia, this is your lung, you have large pneumonia here. You're going to have fever. And you, if I'm giving you vancomycin, I'm treating you. There's nothing to do for you. No matter how large I've described it, you get the antibiotic, you're fixing it. Acute glomerulonephritis. What does that mean? The filtrating system of the kidney is inflamed. This is the kidney, okay? And the filtrating system is inflamed. That means blood is going to leak, protein is going to leak. What do you see? T colored urine and proteinuria. That's blood as leak and protein as leaked. That's why you have T colored urine and proteinuria. Why do you worry about that? Don't even think about it. Sickle cell patient and join this and bilirubin of two. Sickle cell patient, the arabra size sickle, it break down easily. It releases its hemoglobin. Hemoglobin has bilirubin in it. It get pigmented. It make you join this. Why do you care? Don't care about it. You see what I did? Pathophysiology. I can't tell what is going to. I can trace it all the way to the end. What is going to happen to your stool color, your skin, everything? Trigemina neuralgia, inflammation on the nerve. If you touch the nerve, you're going to have shooting pain. Don't even worry about it. Acute nephrotic syndrome, the same thing. You have kidney filtration system is in problem. You get infection and affected such that you're going to leak protein. When you leak protein, protein, your protein level decreases and you start having edema. And the early signs of fluid overload is hypertension. When you see nephrotic syndrome with hypertension, you have to worry. The ICP is going to go up, the pulmonary congestion, a heart failure, all of this is going to happen. And so acute glomerulophritis, acute nephrotic syndrome, the only thing you worry about is hypertension. The rest, don't worry. Edema, uh, protein in your urine, all of them, no. When they start having hypertension, that's number one before they go into CHA. So this patient, we got to see. Hard question. Number 34, what do we have? Four clients on the med cell unit. Which client situation need immediate intervention? Excessive clearing of the throat one hour after tonsillectomy. This guy is bleeding. Keywords, excessive clearing of the throat. They're bleeding, that's why they're swallowing the blood, that's why they're clearing their throat. So you're bleeding. Confusion one hour after femur fracture manipulation. This patient as what? Air embolism. When you have long bone fracture, the fat, no air embolism. Fat embolism can go into your skin, into, into your brain, and into your lung. In skin, you get petechia. In brain, you get confusion. In lung, you have symptoms of airway. If the patient already have confusion, Trust me, it's already in the lung. So this patient is more dangerous. Abdominal rigidity, one hour after gastric bypass. This patient has peritonitis. Pink urine, one hour af after transurethral resection of the prostate. This is what we expect. They will get pink urine clot for one to three days. After the th fourth day, yeah, they're bleeding. So I have a bleeding problem. I have airway and confusion problem, and I have peritonitis. 
Who do you want to see? This is where Bishop come into place. The one that you don't have time with. This patient, you have no time with them. It's, you got to see them. Number two, it's your problem. Hard one too. Next question. Six clients on the neuro unit. Which client situation need intervention? ALS and severe leg weakness, this is what I expect. GBS, severe left and upper extremities weakness, this is what I expect. Don't pick them, they are all distracted. Multiple sclerosis with bladder incontinence, this is what I expect. Don't pick it. Bell palsy and drooling, this is what I expect. One side of their face is paralyzed. They're going to drill. Drilling in bear palsy is normal. Myasthenia gravis and slurred speech, oh no. Your voice has changed. That's airway issue. I should be thinking about being B-sharp moment. Trigeminal neuralgia, electrical uh, sh uh, shock facial pain, this is what I expect. Number five is your only answer. Neurology, easy questions. You don't have to sweat with it. Next question, 30, 36. Client, several clients on the hospital ward. Which client situation need immediate intervention? Selected apply. Every induced thrombocytopenia hit. And you're getting an ozaparin, the sister heparin. I give you heparin, your platelets drop. And then you give them an ozaparin, which is still heparin, platelet will drop more. You should see them. You should give them Zabans or Gatrobans. Yeah, Episibams. Yeah, those one. Depression on Citalopram, that's SSRI. And you're taking Tremador, which is an SSRI derivative. That means it releases serotonin. So we have serotonin and serotonin. We have serotonin syndrome. Asthma patient, shortness of breath after abudro. If I give you abudro, you should not have shortness of breath. You should be rather wheezing, okay? Your symptoms improve. But if you still have shortness of breath, that means the abudro is not working. This patient is maybe going to start us epi uh, 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 asthmatis, asthmaticus, so we got to see. Appendicitis is an itis, I expect tachycardia, don't worry about it. Anorexia patient with the phosphorus of one soon after uh, hyperalimentation, after I put you on TPN, all of a sudden your phosphorus is 1.5. This is what we call what refeeding syndrome. When you start feeding them, their phosphorus go down potassium go down, magnesium go down. Phosphorus for 1.5 has gone too down. This will be a respiratory failure. You have to see this patient. So one, two, three, and five are your right answer. Next question, 37. Several client on the hospital were which client situation need immediate intervention? Severe muscle contraction, after a pen, finisil is what? This is dystonia. It's a problem. Well, let's see if there's something better there. Restlessness. After alloperidol, this is what? Akitesia. Let's see if there's something else. Fever 105 after a teotism injection. This patient is NMS. Drilling after triphenylparasitism. This is what? Pachycinism. Galatoluria after acropromazine. This is sign effect of second generation or first generation antipsychotic. The only one that is a problem, we have dystonia, akitesia, NMS, pachycinism, and galatoluria. The one that will kill them right away is what? NMS. The rest you can treat with medication. Norma, 38. Several clients is in the medics hospital ward. Which client situation need intervention? Divided. Two days post, AKA, above knee amputation, the stamp 
is elevated 45 degrees. After 24 hours, no need to elevate the stamp anymore. What you should recommend is put them in prune position 30 minutes, multiple times a day. Two feet going 30 cc per hour immediately after finishing infusion. Phenotine don't like abumen. So if you have two feet going, you should stop it. You should wait two hours after the infusion. You can't start immediately anymore. This will affect absorption. Using aftershave two hours after disulfiram. Disulfiram is an anti-abuse. It's a medication you take to prevent you from taking alcohol. If you take alcohol, you get sick. You can die from this. Therefore, you got to tell them things that have alcohol that they don't know. Aftershave is bad. So he's getting alcohol from it. Raised toilet seat after hip replacement. This is good. After hip replacement, you want them to prevent what? Bringing the leg together. Adduction and flexing more than 90 degrees at the hip. If you sit in a high uh, toilet seat, you will not flex. Um, and they need a, a abductor wedge. So this patient is doing great. So don't worry about it. Small purple rash on the chest after alloperidol. This is Steven Johnson syndrome because this is a sulfur drug. So small purple rash is dangerous. Salami sandwich after I would try cyclopenine. This is what? M-A-O-I. You should avoid what? Taramine derivative. Salami has too much taramine floating around. So this we can see. So one, two, three, five, and six are your problem. No one, 39. Several clients on the hospital ward. Which client situation need immediate intervention? Left chest tube. I put the left chest, left pneumothorax, okay? And the chest tube with bubbling in the chamber. This is the chest tube, okay? This is the suction. This is the air leak or water seal. And this is the collecting. Suction chamber is where suction comes in. So as you see, some bubbling there. So don't worry about it. Left pneumothorax and hyper resonance in the chest. All it means is there's air in the chest. When there's air in the chest, it will hyper resonate. It sounds louder. Yes, that's what you expect with pneumothorax. Left pneumothorax, decreased breath sound in the right. This is the left, this is the right. You have pneumothorax here. Right? All of a sudden, the right side, there's decrease. This is what we call tension in motorized. This is the form of giving you tension in motorized. The right side should not be affected unless the lung is all displaced, pushing on the right side. A left pneumothorax, chest tube with a small air leak in the air chamber. Tiny air leak in the air chamber, air leak chamber is fine. Left pneumothorax, chest tube with no bubbling in the water seal. There should be no bubbling in the water seal uh, area. So this is good. Left hemothorax and 30 ml chest tube output over an hour. This in a patient weigh what? Three kilos. So 30 over 10 is what? Three ml per kilo per hour. If it's greater than five ml per kilo per hour, it's a problem. Three ml per kilo per hour is not a problem. So there's only one answer there. I intentionally said this hard one. If you get in this, you go in. Check adapt and close if you have a problem and you'll be fine. Last one for the road. Last one for the road. Several clients is on a hospital road. Which client situation need immediate intervention? Who need immediate intervention? A left ankle fracture, pain with dosuflexion after a cast. This is compartment syndrome. Therefore, what do you want to do? Hold on to that. Peripheral IV removal and all of a sudden shortening of breath immediately. This patient has air embolism. If you remove IV, somebody becomes short of breath, they have air embolism. This is dangerous. 
gastric bypass, at a pop, and biosin in the wound. This is what we call wound descents. Left lithotropsy and severe frank pain radiating to the groin. That means the stone, we break the stone, now stay, you go, you pass in the stone, you have pain. Every induced thrombocytopenia and I place you on agatroban. So look, look at it. This is hard one. You got to think about it. If you have epi induced thrombocytopenia, I should not give you epi anymore. No epi, no or no zeppelin. The gatrobans are your best friend. So this, you don't need to worry about. Lithotropsy, I expect you to pass the stone. You're going to have frank pain. Gastric bypass, you had a pop. This is decent, but this is dangerous. Shortness of breath after removal of pick line, the peripheral line, this air embolism and compartment. Who do you think is dangerous? Compartment syndrome, air embolism, or DSS? No brainer, right? Air away is always normal one. And this is the end of it, just to keep on going. After these 40 questions, I mean, I know you've mastered it. If you're not, there's more video on my channels. You can watch them, the B sharp, this, and, um, you just type B sharp or prioritization. You'll be bad. We will be bombarded with a bunch of prioritization, and I want you to master them. Okay. If you've not subscribed, look down, click on the link, and join the Adapt Enclosed family. All the best of luck. Thank you very much for watching, and good luck. Bye bye.